Welcome to Podmas Daily for October 8th, 2008, episode number 94. Today at the computer repair shop where I work and own, laptop came in, a Dell Inspiron 9000. If you've ever seen a Dell Inspiron 9000, it's like a brick. It's humongous, and uh, the power supply weighs more than probably most laptops these days, the, the power adapter. Anyway, this customer must have sentimental uh, attachment to it because he wanted me to fix it. And uh, Here's the symptoms. You, you, we hit the power button. There will be a flash on the screen after we hit the power, power button, like, like the light was uh, initializing or something like that. And then there will be no video, no BIOS. And then after a couple seconds, the computer would turn off. And I took it apart today. What I did was first, and here's here's the tip I, I wanted to give. I can't give a free estimate. That's that's as far as my free estimate goes. There, if he, because if it's a system's doing that, it might be the processor, it might be the motherboard, it might be something internal. For me to go any farther, I have to charge for the diagnostic. And in particular, if it's a laptop where I got to actually go in and replace the processor to make sure that the processor isn't the problem, I'm charging full price for the repair. And I, I, I can't, other because it's almost like doing a full repair. I got to take the entire laptop apart to get to the processor. So that's what I've been doing. And this particular customer, he must really like this laptop because he, I told him like and advised strongly it was probably the motherboard, but I wasn't sure it could be the processor because if the processor overheats, it gets gets pretty messed up. It could have a symptom like that where it goes on for a couple seconds and the computer just dies. So I wanted to replace the processor to be sure, and um, I went in there. These this particular laptop had a, also a video card. Some laptops have video cards. They're kind of just like slapped right on top of the motherboard. And then that video card connects to the screen. So screen plugs into video card, video card plugs into the motherboard in a laptop. And so a lot of times video cards will go bad and cause symptoms such as these. The only thing I didn't think of be that happened in this was when the video cards go bad, it doesn't usually power the system off. It just shows no video. And it also causes the system to just act funny. Um, it won't be operating properly. It's just the, the hard drive won't run and stuff like that. So you'll, mainly you'll get no video. So I wanted to rule out if it was the video card. I pulled the video card out. I hooked up an external monitor to the thing. No, I didn't hook up an external monitor. I pulled the video card out, and I powered the system back on. Now, after I powered the system back on with the video card out, the thing ran. So I thought it was the video card that was, that was happening. In other words, it didn't just run for a couple seconds and then die. It ran for like at least a minute. So I powered it down. I thought everything was fine. I thought for sure it was the video card. Well, it turns out, as I was taking the video card out, the system was cooling. And it, as it turns out, when the system's cool, it runs for about a minute. As the system warms up, it runs for less and less and less amount of time until finally it doesn't even start at all, practically. So that's why I thought it was a video card, because as I'm taking the video card out, maybe 15, 20 minutes went by, I tried powering on the PC or the computer after the video card went out, it stayed on. So I thought the video card was a problem, but that wasn't the case. So I actually went in there, replaced a processor, Tried it again, same thing. Goes on for a couple seconds and then dies. So it's definitely a motherboard. You know, I replaced all the normal things, RAM, uh, the wireless card. You know, I hooked up an external monitor. Same symptoms. So it turns out it was a motherboard. Could probably get one for about 170 bucks on eBay. You know, you could still for under 300 bucks, you could fix replace a motherboard and a laptop for a per and people might actually go for that. It's cheaper than a new machine still. Anyway, we had an eMachines desktop come in today. We diagnosed a bad motherboard. Um, how did we diagnose that? Let's see. Um, because it came in, just it came in, and I think I can't remember how I got that exact diagnosis. I'm sorry. Um, but usually, when a system comes in, I'll check to see if the motherboard's bad. If it's not powering on, if it's not powering on at all, it could be the power supply or it could be the motherboard. Well, in this particular case, um, a lot of times when you open up the computer to see if it's the power supply or the motherboard, and you have the power plugged into the power supply, the power cord is actually plugged into the power supply, and a little LED is lit on the motherboard, in my experience, that usually means the motherboard's bad, because if that LED wouldn't be lit if the power supply wasn't feeding it any power, if the power supply was completely dead, that LED on the motherboard wouldn't even be lit. So both give the same symptom, though. You hit the power button, and nothing happens. Excuse me. The only difference is I found that the LED is lit on the motherboard if it's usually the motherboard that's bad. Because uh, the power supply wouldn't be lighting that light if the power supply was bad. 
Well, turn. I gave so I gave him an estimate for a motherboard. One seventy is what I one seventy nine. I charge him for for fixing a motherboard, replacing a motherboard. Okay. Now you got the reason I'm bringing this up is you got to be careful when you when you give quotes when you think it's a bad motherboard. It turns out also the power supply was bad. It turns out also the CD drive was bad, and it turns out also that the hard drive is severely corrupted. I think it can still be used, but I'm not sure yet. We got to find out tomorrow. So you're looking at a whole new system basically. When I quoted them for, you know, replacing a motherboard. And then I kept it a couple days while I got the motherboard, put the motherboard in, then found out all the other components were bad. So I'm saying just be careful on your quotes. You could, it could look like only one thing's wrong, but until you fix that motherboard, you're not going to know if the CD drive, the hard drive, and the power, sp- the power supply are bad or the RAM or any other thing on, on the system. So just be careful when you're giving quotes. Make sure that the, you know, customers know it's subject to change because you, don't know, you can't tell at certain points of the repair what's bad until you actually get to that part. Uh, we used a C tools bootable CD on uh, that computer after we got the CD drive fixed to uh, to check out the hard drive. I know you guys have been giving me good hard drive tools. I haven't had a chance to check them. I want to check them out. If you're looking for good hard drive tools, just check the show notes for Podnuts Daily. Uh, I've been getting a lot of good suggestions on that. But I like the C tools bootable CD. Uh, I think it's Linux based. No, it's it's DOS based actually. And the thing boots like a rocket. It's a real small, slim program. It's easy to read. It's it's got a good interface, and I really like it because you just pop it in, boot it. it takes like ten seconds to boot, and then you could run the short, long test and use C tools to find out what's going on with the drive. Okay, now for what happened yesterday, a sound cut out. Let me see. Is the sound still on? Is the sound still on? Check one, two. Okay, my sound's still on. Okay, I'm going to be looking at that chat room if my sound goes out again. Uh, anyway, the sound went out as I was reading about four emails yesterday, so I'm going to reread them again. I lost about ten minutes of uh, of the show there. Um, this is from Ray. Hi, Steve. I need help with an e-machine, two-gigabyte Celeron processor. It needed a power supply. I replaced that, and as soon as I plugged in the power fan and the CPU start fan started, I noticed the on-off switch was, button was jammed in. You know what, Ray? I, can't, I don't know if I read this before in an earlier episode, but I'm going to read it again. Um... So he has, he has an e-machine, 2 gig Celeron, needed a power supply. As soon as he replaced the power supply, the power fan and the CPU started. I noticed the on-off switch button was jammed in. I took the front cover off to expose the switch. I pushed and held. You know, I think I did read this, Ray. Guys, hang on a second. I just want to check if I read this one before. Let's see if it sounds too familiar. I think I actually read it when the sound was working. Let me just look at the show notes here. Okay, show notes, Ray, from Ray. E-Machines, power supply replacement. Okay, we did read that one. Okay, already read that one. Sorry, guys. Next email from Jack, and this is for the e- the leaf blower contest. About six months ago, I was tr- – and uh, this, 